can just send me the link. You know, the I'm link. I'm okay. Uh, Scholar Abdullah. Right. Um, hello, everyone. So nice to be here again uh, on our usual episode with uh, the Odd Sport International Scholarship Forum. And um, with me today, I have great and amazing scholars uh, from the Mohammed Six Polytechnic University that today together will be demystifying the UM6P uh, application. Without any further ado, um, I'm going to start by presenting my guests here and um, giving you a brief introduction about their profiles. And um, uh, each of my um, presenters here will be having 10 minutes uh, for them to uh, discuss uh, the topic, which I'm going to give to them. And after which we'll be having uh, a Q&A session, uh, which will also span for uh, 10 minutes. So uh, my first um, my first scholar here is um, scholar Oladimeji Kudus, who is a current first year student at the School of Collective Intelligence, Mohammed VI Polytechnic University. Uh, he is an odor consultant with two years working experience and also a graduate of management and accounting from Obafemi Awolowo University here in Nigeria. Uh, my second um, scholar goes by the great word, uh, scholar Aziz Adewale Amzat, who is one of the first quote, the first graduating set of the School of Collective Intelligence uh, at the Mohammed VI Polytechnic University. He has a bachelor degree in crop and environmental protection uh, from uh, Ladoke Akitola University of Technology in Obomosho. And um, he is a founder uh, of a great platform, uh, a consulting firm that is into helping organi uh, organization to harness uh, the power of uh, collective intelligence. Moving forward, I have Scholar Babatule Ibukun, who is a graduate of um, electrical electronics engineering uh, from um, um, from Federal University of Technology, Akure, and um, is also uh, a first year master student at the School of Collective Intelligence. Uh, Scholar Batunde is Bukun has spoken in many conferences to young people and is one of the fastest rising and most preferred young speakers in Nigeria. He has authored quite a number of books, uh, counting from Mind Shift, The Rule of Games, The Hidden Secret in You, and one of the most recent books which he has written, uh, titled uh, What Smart Graduates Do Before and During NYIC. And the last one, which is You Are Not Enough. You Are Enough, sorry, You Are Enough. So moving forward, I have scholar Olumide Areo, who has a background in accounting and is currently a first year master student at the uh, School of International Management at a close under the African Business School of uh, UM6P. He's a writer in your writing and about historical narratives and social development. He's a poet and a non visual writer. He has, his work has made about top 15 globally on the Peter uh, Drucker essay on leadership and critical. In here is a, um, a scholar, Salam, who backed his first degree from um, Bayero University, Kano in Nigeria, in accounting. And he is currently a second year master student at the School of Collective Intelligence. Uh, kindly welcome. Um, I have this uh, very. I would like you guys to say one or two words before I give you the topic. Thank you. We can start with Aziz. Okay. Um, thank you. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Please. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Aziz Adewale Hamza, yes, as uh, as I've been introduced. So I'm happy to be here, and I look forward to um, your you listening and your questions as well. So thank you. 
Thank you very much. Let's go with you, Sulaiman. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Abdul Salam. I'm Suleiman. I'm a second year MSc student at the School of Collective Intelligence. So it's so nice being here to give you information about our wonderful school and program. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, David, let's go with you. Hi. Can you guys hear me at all? I want to be sure about more people. Okay, thank you. So yeah, my name is Batunde Ibukun David. Um, I'm a year one master student at SCI, uh, UMCSP, and I'll be here this evening to talk about some of the things about how you can get into UMCSP and the like. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. All right. Um, like uh, my fellow uh, scholar has mentioned, my name is Olumide Areo, and uh, I'll also be engaging with you all at the International Management Prospects from the Africa Business School, as well as additionally on motivation letter writing, which we believe will help the uh, aspirants to further strengthen the applications. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Udus, are you there? Yes. Okay, cool. Powerfully. Uh, can you okay. hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can hear you fine. Okay. Um, um, as, it has, um, as it has been earlier alluded, my name is Olade Jukudus. So, uh, the, uh, the for the so that will be my tax for today thank you okay um thank you very much actually uh scholar kudos if you can hear us fine uh i'll be glad if you can find a place better because i uh, we can hardly hear your voice very well so if you can find a place before we get to you it will be nice uh, and great so um moving forward uh my presenters generally as uh, topics that have been given to them and um, some of them as presentation slides to share with us. So um, I wouldn't want to take our time. So I want each and everyone to have a maximum of 10, 10 minutes each. Uh, and we're going to start with uh, Scholar Aziz. Uh, he'll be talking as regards UM6 speed generally, the courses and um, uh, some of the reasons why you need to uh, apply to UM6 speed. Scholarsis, you have the floor in 10 minutes. All right. Um, hello, thank you. Can you uh, see my slide? Um, not yet. Yes, we can see it now. We can see it now. Oh, OK. Uh, so um, as Abdullah said, I'll be uh, presenting to you about Morocco and about uh, the UMCSP. And the reason why I want to talk about Morocco is because uh, I remember when I was coming to Morocco in 2020, uh, someone uh, asked me at the airport, he said, of all places, why Morocco? So, and you know, see, today there are some men, uh, there are some people that are still asking this kind of question and you find it funny that they are so, you know, uninformed about the opportunity that surrounds them. And also there are many uh, potential applicants that sometimes do ask us, they say, um, I'm a Muslim and I know that Morocco is a Muslim country, but maybe they will not give me admission. Maybe I should not bother myself. So this is why uh, I see that uh, it is important for us to uh, talk about Morocco. So we've highlighted uh, some of the benefits for you of you uh, for you that when you come to Morocco that you can get. So these are some of it. Uh, one of it is the geographical location. And as we popularly know, uh, Morocco is, uh, is uh, in the North Africa, uh, making, this makes it a great, uh, the gateway between Africa and Europe. And the other thing is that uh, Morocco is rich in culture and history. Uh, as uh, maybe you know, uh, it's a combination of Arab, Berber, and European uh, uh, cultures as well. And this country has a relatively low cost of living. Uh, when you compare this to uh, living in other, uh, when you get admission in other countries like Europe, here we, we are not paying any tax and things are very cheap and uh, not expensive. And also Morocco has a lot of uh, landscape and you will see here uh, yesterday news, this is just yesterday news uh, from India, 
uh, where uh, Morocco was crowned the best uh, picturesque uh, country in the world. And also, uh, Morocco is a country that has a lot of uh, good history and diverse culture. Uh, and also, uh, when you compare, like I said, to other destinations where we go to uh, study, uh, so Morocco has, uh, you know, the cost of living here is not expensive at all. The housing, the food, and also uh, the people here has uh, a lot of, uh, they are very nice. I mean, they are hospitable. So when you are invited to, to a Moroccan house, you should know that you must not eat anything before you go because you will be here eating a lot of uh, good things when you get there. So uh, do not waste your time here. Let's move to why you MTSP, as you, you've seen that, you've seen that I, I highlighted here. But uh, before, uh, you know, before presenting this to you, I would just like to go forward so that uh, I will be using evidence to back each of these uh, things that I've highlighted here. Uh, the vision of UMCSP, as uh, we know, uh, UMCSP being a dedicated uh, university that is uh, focusing on high quality education and research uh, for students that is coming around the world, but cited here in Africa. So the aim is to have a global impact with a commitment to empowering uh, creativity through uh, experimentation. And you will see here uh, that uh, Morocco here is cited, I mean, Sorry about that. Uh, UMCSP is cited here in uh, Benguerir, where it is popularly known as the green city of uh, Benguerir. And uh, you see a lot of green, uh, green, uh, greenery around it. And here we have the data center and all sorts. Uh, but uh, because of my time, let me just move forward. So UMCSP was, um, you know, was initiated in 2009 as part of uh, the Green City uh, project when the, uh, His Majesty the King may Allah assist him when he launched uh, the, the Green City. Of, uh, uh, okay, so, and the construction started in 2012 and since then the university has been adding, launching different schools under UMCSP uh, till, the, till date. So you will see here, um, I wouldn't want to go through each of them uh, because of the time, so, and, also, to make sure, like to make sure the vision of UMCSP uh, is uh, achieved. So the, there are seven uh, thematic sites that are currently existing under UMCSP. We are here. We have in Benguerre, We have the central campus here, and also in Rabat, uh, we have other uh, schools under UMCSP here. Uh, there, and also uh, I think it is important for me to mention that the Crown Prince of Morocco is also studying with us at UMCSP. So if you are coming here, you should know that you are not just coming to just any ordinary university, you are coming to a renowned university. So, and also UMCSP has uh, international uh, recognition. For instance, UMCSP is currently opening a branch in, U, uh, at, in France. So, and this is uh, not, um, this is very not common to other university that you can get anywhere. So uh, one of the uh, benefits that you have here in uh, UMCSP when you choose UMCSP is quality education. Like I said, the UMCSP is partnering with a lot of uh, universities and research institutions around the world. As you can see in the slide here, you see a lot of uh, uh, research institutions and universities here. For instance, we, here we have MIT. We have uh, a lot of you know set up that is coming from different uh, countries. So. If you are coming here, whatever your project, whatever your uh, intended course of study, you'll be sure that UMCSP uh, has got you covered. So, and also UMCSP is using innovative approach. Although UMCSP is a young and dynamic, uh, uh, dynamic university, uh, but here there is focus on innovation and entrepreneurship. Like I said, uh, UMCSP is focusing on um, learning through experimentation. So. All these, uh, each of these things you see here, they are startup that students are uh, started, but UMCSP supported them to make sure that they, they got to uh, success. And uh, one other thing is that uh, there are many uh, students that are coming from different uh, countries around the world, especially uh, from Africa. You will see here uh, that uh, we have 15 plus uh, African country here, and Nigeria is probably at the, uh, you know, at the top of, of this list. And you have many other people, uh, countries uh, that are there. So one of the benefits that you get from here is that you meet, you get to study from uh, with students from different 
country, you get to network with them, you get to learn about their culture, you get to learn about many things. And uh, a, that alone in itself is a, a different learning than even, even your course of study. So it's one benefit that cannot be traded off for anything. And also, when you come to UMCSP, uh, you will get to study under scholarship. Uh, if you happen to be, uh, you, you if you demonstrate academic excellence, and if you can show that you really have financial aid, uh, financial need. So when uh, my uh, colleague is presenting, he will be telling you about how to go with this uh, opportunity. Uh, but just to show you, you see here that uh, just for year 2022 and 2023 academic year. UNCSP is budgeting 109 uh, million Moroccan dirham. So uh, as a Nigerian, I'm sure if you, if I, when I, I've done that, I've done the uh, calculation before, but I don't remember the actual now. But if you can compute this and you will see that it's a lot of money when you compare this to uh, Naira. So that UMCSP is giving a scholarship for you when you come here. So uh, this is UMCSP in numbers. As at uh, September 2022, UMCSP have uh, more than 4,000 uh, total students uh, that are studying here, uh, and we are still growing in number. So the vision is that by 2025, uh, the university will be having uh, more than 6,000 students. So, uh, and hopefully, I, I hope that you will be part of those uh, additional students that will be coming here. So we have PhD students, we have... Uh, you know, master student, bachelor student, and many others. So uh, I hope that you will be here among us as well. And one thing, one, one of the important things that I really like to talk about UMCSP is the data center that you can see on the picture here. So uh, the data center by uh, that is, uh, um, I mean, created by UMCSP happened to be the largest data center in Morocco. And in fact, the, uh, the largest in Africa. So this is one of the things that should motivate you to want to come here to study at, uh, at this university. So I uh, will try to gather uh, some of the things that UMCSP writes. And here we, we, we can see that at UMCSP, UMCSP is the first digital interactive center uh, in Morocco. And also uh, UMCSP currently have uh, four operational digital studies and there are 12 others that are uh, in progress. And um, UMCSP, uh, the university, as I'm saying UMCSP here, I'm sure you understand that it's Muhammad VI University, uh, Polytechnic University I'm talking about. So we happen to have, uh, to, to be the first uh, producer of the first 100% Moroccan inter uh, intensive care uh, ventilator. And also, honorably, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to tell you that uh, uh, this university happened to be the first one to have School of Collective Intelligence anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. So when uh, my friend will be presenting the School of Collective Intelligence to you, you will see. So what are the academic offers that you say? So before I go, uh, I would like you to note the red uh, hint here that I put here. So the courses that I've listed here, they are just the English taught programs, but there are many other degrees, many other French uh, taught uh, degrees that are here in UMCSP. But because of the target audience for this webinar, uh, I've highlighted just the English uh, thought uh, courses so that you will not get confused because many people are getting confused and asking. So for undergraduate, uh, there is bachelor's degree in hospitality business and management, and also there is doc doctorate in medicine and pharmacy. Uh, somebody okay. asked. Uh, Somebody asked a while ago that uh, the doctorate in medicine and pharmacy, is it PhD? Because they think it's a PhD, but it's undergraduate. But it's, you know, when you go to hospital, you say you want to meet doctor. So this is the doctor we are uh, talking about here. So it's for undergraduate. And also the graduate uh, degrees. We have a master's in collective intelligence and also master's in agribusiness in, uh, innovation. So here, this, this agribusiness innovation is the first one here, uh, and the, the, this one, this uh, hopefully you that will be coming, you'll be the first cohort in this master's as well. And also, there's master's in international management and also QFM and also material sciences as well. So, uh, to uh, manage my time, I uh, gather the school here so that you can see the other schools uh, and other courses that are uh, French thoughts and also combination of, uh, combination of English thought as well. So maybe uh, whenever you have time to rewatch this video, you can, or when you get when you visit the website, 
you can easily uh, check uh, which of these schools uh, meets your satisfaction. And also, we've made uh, a video on the demo video on how to apply for this master's uh, degree so that we will not go over it again now because it's, it's a little uh, bit lengthy, but we will be dropping the link to that so that you can watch it's well, uh, I mean, explain uh, step by step of how to apply uh, for the admission, what mistake you should not make and all, all sorts. So uh, I believe that I've, I've been able to convince you that uh, Morocco and UMCSP are the great uh, uh, choices uh, for you as international and especially African students that uh, you can choose and to study here. So uh, thank you. Uh, if you will have uh, questions regarding this at the end, uh, I will be happy to uh, respond to you. So thank you. Um, thank you very much, Kola Aziz. Um, we really appreciate that. And uh, it really means a lot to us. And um, probably you forgot to tell us that uh, UNCSP actually gave back to your dream of founding the Rising Intel. You forgot to add Yes. That. Okay. Well, well, thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, one of the things is that uh, there are many things that I want I've, I want to do in my life, but if uh, I'd not got like if I didn't have admission at UMCSP, maybe uh, I would still be chasing those things. Uh, one of it is that um, uh, well, it's not just UMCSP, but the School of Collective Intelligence. When I studied at the School of Collective Intelligence, I got to know about many things about human resources about you know that collective intelligence is just as the name it is so and i'm able to have uh, a firm now that is called the rising intel we have the uh, the uh, website very well uh, organized and also abilai happened to be uh, the, the co uh, the the co uh, how do you say co-founder as well <laughs> i'm talking as a researcher saying co -author. so co-founder as well and this is uh, you know, this is what I got here. I didn't have the, you know, the resources before. I, but when I studied here, I got the internet access. I got the support. And also, I applied tw twice. I've applied for Explorer, uh, which happened to be one of the body that supports entrepreneurship. And the last one I uh, applied for, they gave us the uh, 30,000 dirham, you know, to, you know, to support our startup. Imagine when you compare, when you, uh, Evaluate that thirty thousand dirham in naira. Uh, someone just that someone is just giving us so that we can be successful. You will know that they really mean business. So thanks for reminding me about that. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, moving forward, if you have any question, we'll take it at the end of uh, the uh, seminar. So uh, I would like to call on uh, scholar Sulaiman, who will be talking as regards application to score of collective intelligence like i've introduced them at the beginning of the uh of this webinar that um we are having scholars from school of collective intelligence so probably this is why our talk today will be centered on the school of collective intelligence so you're highly welcome scholars scholar Suleiman. uh you can have the floor all right thank you let me share my Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Not yet, not yet. What about now? Uh, maybe it's coming up. Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, we see it. Can you see it now? Yeah, yeah, we see it. Go ahead. Can everyone as well see it? Yes, yes we, we, can, can. we can see, we can see. All right. So yeah, my name is Abdusalam Suleiman. I'm a second year MSc student at the School of um, Collective Intelligence. So just to manage my time, I'll take you through um, what the School of, what we actually do in the School of Collective Intelligence. So here you can see our motto, we are advancing the knowledge and tools needed for a collaborative um, society. So when we say collective intelligence, we, we, we simply means when the group like outperform individuals in learning, problem solving, decision making, and the likes. So collective intelligence as well is a scientific uh, field studying the conditions of these um, phenomena, 
within teams, studying the conditions of phenomena within teams, organization, and societies as well. So um, why do we need um, specialists in the um, field of collective intelligence? Firstly, is to better understand how humans operate in groups to build technologies that enhance our what, um, collective um, skills. Because um, presently now, there are different sort of um, collective um, tools which we use in co um, like annexing our collective knowledge. One of it is um, being built by one of our professors in the school, which is um, Professor Emil. It is called the Hypermind um, Prediction Platform. We also have um, another which is being built by um, our professor from the MIT, uh, Professor Mark Klein, which is called um, the Deliberatorium or Platform. So these are collective intelligence tools that help us what aggregate what knowledge from the crowd to help us what um, make informed what decision. So thirdly, to understand how to use what big data to make what better decision. And um, lastly, to transform organization to maximize collective what ability. So um, the School of Collective Intelligence um, specializes in what research, education, innovation, technology, as well as um, social impact. Yes, that course across um, every um, um, field. So we have different um, researchers and professors in the School of Collective Intelligence um, from different fields, actually. So you can see we have those from the field of computer science, social computing, economics, anthropology, data science. And what makes um, this uh, very uh, master program unique is that 90% of the professors are actually from the United States, UK, France, Spain, and the likes. So with um, many years of experience. So you can be assured you actually have um, thorough what, uh, mentoring when you apply to the School of Collective Intelligence, having this set of um, faculty um, members. So the three research teams here at the School of Collective Intelligence is collective computing. They are actually not um, limited to it. Collective computing and modeling, culture and tradition, diverse and um, LD um, communities. So as you can see here, we have like um, just a brief picture of um, our recently graduated, the first court in the master of the School of Collective Intelligence. So you can see like our moderator here, Baba Tunde, is here and as well as Aziz so and the rest of their um, court so you can see here is the when they were having their um, graduation um, ceremony so yes so um for the masters in collective intelligence um the three major um special should i say specialization we have um the human behavior and the cognitive science parts the second is the computer science and the modeling aspect why the third is um, the management organization and organizational what, um, transformation. So it's actually what interdisciplinary. So for the first part, like you probably want to focus more on the cognitive science aspects, um, experimental method, as well as what um, scientific English. So you use the method of psychology to examine what our human what, what behaves and their performance in different what, environments. So in summary, this is just how to what, how we think individually and in what and in um and in groups. So for the second aspect, which is um, computer science and modeling, maybe you want to focus more if your interests lie in maybe data science, agent-based modeling. So data science and statistics, as well as um probably maybe computer science. Maybe you are from that background and you have interest in this place. So when you have such background and you have interest in this um particular aspect. What do you do? You learn how to manage what big data to draw what meaningful what conclusions from thousands of what opinions considered what at once as we get in our uh, online what surveys. So our computer science can what connect people what at scale. So totally, probably this might interest our people from the non um, STEM field, maybe those coming from the management aspects, the business aspect and the likes. They might find this um, very interesting, which is um, the third um, um, area of specialization, which is um, innovation, entrepreneurship, evidence-based management, organizational transformation, and facilitation. So what do they do here? You learn how to make strategic what decision, combining data and what collective what inputs, how to manage and launch um, innovative um, organization, lead communities, and facilitate what change. So in summary, when you specialize here, you simply want to learn how to make organization and teamwork what 
works matter. So um, here is some of the courses, like uh, all the courses you'll be taking for the duration of your two years stay at the School of Collective Intelligence. So like the first semester, you'll be taking, undertaking um, six um, courses. So which course are course different um, discipline, programming, data science, statistics, cognitive science, computer science method in collective intelligence, experimental method, scientific English, um, innovation, entrepreneurship, and startup design. So for the second semester as well, you also be undergoing um, some other courses there. So at the end of your second semester, you'll be meant to undergo like a six week um, summer internship, probably maybe with some organization which you intend to um, conduct maybe your six months um, at the end of the year internship, research internship or what have you. So for the third semester as well, you undergo program, um, courses in programming, data science and statistics, computer science method in collective intelligence, cognitive science, experimental method, political science and participatory governance and evidence-based world um, leadership. In this very particular um, course, you have to come up with like an organization, an organization which you foresee yourself having in the future. So I need to make you like, you know, prepared for the job market as if you want to go into the industry. So at the end of the, um, your coursework, you'll be undergoing your six uh, month internship, which can either be what research based or professional based. It all depends on you. So maybe if you are nurturing the idea of what embarking on a PhD in the future, so in the course of this your entire uh, research um, internship, you'll be undergoing some sort of what research work, some thesis work with some top organization, be it in Africa or anywhere around the world. So like presently in my cohort, we have um, like three different of our three different students who are already planning on going outside Morocco to conduct their internship. One is currently in the UK undergoing his internship there. And um, the rest of us are as well going outside Morocco um, to undergo our uh, internship as well. So for the after talking about the master's program, we also have the PhD program, which is um full year, uh, four year full time, as well as the, as the postdoc, and they are all were fully taught in English um, language. So um, I urge you to join um like the growing network of what innovators in our schools. We have a lot of alumni here now. So when you join this network, what happens? You connect with what mentors and colleagues using collective intelligence method in their daily work, digital transformation of large industrial what, um, company, supporting remote learning in rural what, areas, community knowledge informing what public policy, studying how to promote what gender equality, uh, equality in what in hiring. So like some people might usually ask if I study the, um, the master's program in collective intelligence, what's like, what are the likelihood of maybe getting a job uh, after like, the career outlook, job prospect. So I can gladly tell you, like I've explained earlier, when you are focusing on the human behavior and the cognitive science aspect, you acquire what method in psychology to examine human what behavior and perform in different what environments. So what can you actually work as? You can work as a human resource what specialist and as well as a research and development what officer. So when you are specializing on the computer science and data management aspect, you are out uh, specializing on how to what, assess large bodies of what data for research companies, investigating political attitude across Africa, or assessing a market for a what a new product. So here you can work as a computer and information system officer as well as what a data analyst. So for the last aspect, which is uh, the management and organizational transformation, which um, I think um, people from the non STEM might find very interesting like how to facilitate change in groups like corporations, NGOs, or public administration, how to lead and make decisions in group or teams or in our community in general. So at the end, you work like um, as a management consultant or even as an entrepreneur. So like Aziz uh, mentioned previously, he came up with an idea, which is, um, which is um, now known as um, the Rising Intel, which has, um, they've been writing like a proposal to seek for work fund, which I, hope they will get um, very soon. And I think they are in the process of um, getting it. So you can as well come up with an, like an idea, you know, you submit your proposal and these guys, they will fund you because the money is already there. 
So um, the admission timeline for the deadline for the for application is um, the thirty first of um, of March, which is like a month from now. So after you apply and you are shortlisted, you'll be meant to go like uh, undergo a written exams online as well as um, an oral interview. I think one of my colleagues are um, still going to talk much uh, on that. So yes, um, the registration fee is 5,000, the tuition fee is 75,000 dirhams. And when you convert this to Naira, is a huge sum of money. So what are your, the eligibility to apply into the School of Collective Intelligence? Like I said earlier, it's an interdisciplinary field and um, the research is of uh, interdisciplinary nature. So the um, candidate must hold a bachelor's degree or license like they call in French or IA. So like here, yeah, there are no specific word background. You can actually apply with any different background, any background, be it accounting, be it finance, computer science, engineering, agriculture, and what have you. So you are all welcome to apply into the School of Collective Intelligence. So the, it is not what um, like um, background specific. It is interdisciplinary what in nature. So I welcome you all to apply into the School of Collective Intelligence. So for the scholarship, um, my one of my colleagues as well will be taking you through a detailed aspect um, for the scholarship. So, but be rest assured when you provide the necessary document you are asked to provide, you'll be given what full scholarship. So there are two types of scholarship here, excellence scholarship based on ranking in the admission test and financial aid based on financial situation of what of the student. So, um, and um, the School of Collective Intelligence as well is in partnership with a lot of um, institutions around the world. So as you can see them here, MIT, we even have currently a professor from the MIT here. So like the ENS uh, in Paris, we have one of our PhD students who is as well in Paris as I'm talking to you. So um, NYU in the United States, Yale University and the likes. So a lot of, these are just some of the partner institution with um, this um, school of um, collective intelligence. So I think I will stop here now to give uh, my other colleagues the chance to take us through um, the remaining aspect of the webinar. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Scholar Suleiman. We really appreciate that. Um, without wasting our time, um, I wouldn't want to call on uh, Scholar Kudus yet because I was hoping he would give us um, the talk as regards application in um, to SCI itself. But before that, let's ask Scholar David his journey so far to the School of Collective Intelligence. He is a first year. Uh, master student at the School of Collective Intelligence. So I want him to give us his journey so far. How did he get to the School of Collective Intelligence? How was his journey? Was it easy? Was it difficult? Please, uh, you can have the floor. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much um, for this privilege. And I'm glad to be here with uh, my fellow scholars. Okay, so um, I'll just tell you a story quickly and to be so brief, I think I have just 10 minutes. So so right, right, right during my YC, um i i knew that okay probably like during my nyc i knew that i wanted to like study abroad after NYC. so that was like that was sure for me so but i didn't know how to go about it i didn't know what to do but i'll just see a lot of people on linkedin they just post on linkedin like i got the fully funded scholarship i'm like really like is it that easy so like so every time i'll just go on linkedin like read i'm like okay one day what they meet so i'll be like this guy but how i was going to go about it i didn't know how to go about it so so for me, that began doing NYC. So I started asking questions, I started like going online, going on YouTube, like watching videos of all these popular guys who are always posting about scholarship. Even though I felt like I'm oh, guys they won't marry me because how would somebody just look at you and like just fund you abroad, like and you know, yeah, you, you have like you don't have to pay anything. And so, so some even get stipends like why so I'm like, how is it possible? So that how the whole thing began for me. So I started writing like a lot of applications to the US, I mean to UK. I even got one UK admission, like you know, UK doesn't care, they, they just want your money. So I got one UK admission, like that was sometimes, and when I look at the tuition fees I was going to pay like my god I can't pay this amount of money but the one in the US that has to do with scholarship I was just getting a lot of love letters like a lot of love letters we are sorry to inform you that so I, I even got used to love it like once I see that we are sorry to inform you that or once I see like a response to my application 
and it's not starting with um we are we are pleased to inform you so what's starting like a story just so that you're already out of it like once you're hearing like a story from them <laughs> so i i got used like in a lot of rejections and but one thing was also for me <laughs> that i know that if if i persist if i keep on doing this thing over and over again i would eventually get one how to happen i didn't know but one i was sure of that if i keep like applying to a lot of things and so for me it was more about applying to a lot of places because i didn't know which one would click exactly so that went so uh in the and as my wife still was um getting to an end um so i, I just saw deborah was my classmate she's like um a senior colleague right now like um, um year two so she was my classmate when i was in undergraduate so she just posted about sci and uh, i'm like okay i don't know much about sci but i attended the first webinar last year so and i'm here this year like i'm speaking with you guys so i was and, so, and some of you also like here today will be with us next year speaking with people who will be coming after you so i mean so i just applied and um i didn't think but actually quite honestly i was like morocco hey morocco we have a christian no like i didn't see an islamic country and i don't want trouble <laughs> so i was quite skeptical i was like hey morocco 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 like i since i quite honestly i just applied because i didn't get much info about how beautiful this school was i didn't get much info about how like amazing this place is so i just felt like well, kasha applies to us who knows i mean so i just applied i mean even my my cover letter right now I, i'm motiv i'm motivating guys to apply putting their best into their but when i was doing my own i was just like ah, come on show my boss to share like i was not really like sure of if i wanted to go there so so eventually i i i some of courage i applied and uh it looks like like a film trip for me and okay before then actually before then i was preparing for um for my gre for the u.s because i wanted to like write gre because i, I my, my my background is in engineering so i wanted to go to the u.s i mean all my friends are going to the u.s so why can't i go to the u.s so <laughs> so i had to go to the u.s at first and i was applying but so i i, I felt like public combat for gre so i got some money um paid for my gre so the time i was um writing the GRE was when I had to apply. So it was like, all of them were like coinciding together. So like, I needed to do both of them. So I wrote my GRE, I, 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 I had a pretty decent score actually. So even though I didn't eventually use GRE for this application. <laughs> so eventually I, I I submitted my application like probably like some days to when to close. And yeah, even though I was saying that I didn't put a lot of effort, it doesn't mean that I didn't put any effort because um, when I was writing my cover letter, I was like, let's try it out. but when i i got the first um i mean when i came through the first process and um, because at first actually i wasn't even called at first for the um written interview so i really lost hope and i don't know what happened by some act of divine whatever it is so i i just got an an, an, an offer that i should come and i'll write in the uh, interview I'm like wow interview i can imagine you're around the idea so i was quite happy that okay i'll write in that interview so and that interview and my GR exams like were almost like coinciding, but I didn't have to like do both of them together. So I went for the uh, um, for the not, I mean for the exams, which I didn't even know what to read about, but it was quite like you no know, um, normal math and English talk and things like that. So I went for the for the interview for the exams, and I mean there was a lot of tension because at, at that time I've been getting a lot of rejection letter so i think i only had one i was waiting for italy because i applied to italy so i was expecting to get their their reply so while i was um, waiting for the response from my um from the exam i was waiting for for umcsp um italy sent me love letter also so i i just like okay at this point now i think i only have just one choice it's that I'm either in, I'm in morocco or after nyc i'll just like you know just continue my business so <laughs> so and i was so a lot of tension then and i was i think i was in contact with some of my my, my senior colleagues who are also in this place so and they're always giving us a lot of pressure and tension like they were like and then people were like so on on people were like oh that love unrest they're like, asking them okay when are we going to get our response back so i think about some days after the centers um the list i think about 40 people qualified for for the interview i'm like hey voila now 40 and they want to choose like about just like few people out of i'm like how will i even like cut me up with all of these people and okay any which way but at this point it wasn't just about me just doing things casually again at this point i knew that i just need to get to this school i didn't have to put in my best so when the interview came for me 
I, I wasn't just doing like uh, kashashi. I did because I, that was that was like like my last choice. So for me to like we die here. <laughs> so when the interview came, I already like realized I've I've read all the um SCI material. I've already put it in my head. What I mean, I even went as far as like knowing the name of the professors in in the department because I'm like at this point I need to impress these guys. So I I all my achievements. I was, <laughs> So I was like, like, so at the at the interview for me, I think that I had to put in my best, all my achievements, all my, and luckily also for me also because um, I mean, although programming programming skills is not like a must for you to have, but if you have it, like, um, if you have it, it will be like a plus for you. You get so luckily for me, like I think during my NYSC, I I I knew that I would like get more skills for myself, so I, I started learning Python then. So I had like I was following this hundred days of code by Angela Yu. So I've written like about seventy days code or something. So I was like putting it on my GitHub consistently. So when uh, one of our professors asked me like, "Do you have any programming experience?" I'm like ah, I have enough of them. Like, I, I, I can even send him my GitHub. <laughs> so I sent him my GitHub profile and I love I like a lot of stuff going on there. So I think that of this 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 interview I've put the power already so I need that okay at least I, I think I'll be getting inside so and when I the whole thing ended and of course like I said I had already like learned all about SCI from the bronchial multi car back to back all the five fields that uh, all the all the field of SCI and things like that so so interesting so when that was done, like hey at this point now it's now on gold so I don't know this cool went for like almost close to like two weeks or three weeks no response to anybody everybody was so like everybody was asking our senior colleagues like how far now kill on what was happening like what's happening with these people no response from them me i just kept quiet I'm like i'm like see at this point <laughs> so luckily they they released the 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 people that qualified i'm like when i saw my name they were like finally 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 i'm leaving this nigeria for good <laughs> <laughs> so that was just that was that was in short like the long and short of the entire story and of course the, the, the part for the scholarship was quite also like um something that yeah that was so tasking but of course if you listen to it, like i mean our senior colleagues were there to really help us and daily i actually um Ab abdul Suleiman was really there for me personally and i thank him for that so i guess i should just uh run of course add like a minute more so that's basically my, my story. So I in just one word, the fact remains that if you don't um if you don't stop, you would win. And please put in your best effort, like put in your best effort. You never know the one that would eventually click, put in your best effort. And um, yeah, my current experience at SCI, believe me, this is one of the best places to be. Like I mean, I've seen people ask me that. Am I in Europe? Yes, I'm in Europe, actually. <laughs> so I mean, I'm I'm at the best place to be, and this is the best. I mean, I've okay. Let me do let me talk to much about that. But this is the best place to be, and I'm not exaggerating. I'm trying to like um sell to you. Like this is my own experience here. Like I'm having my best time, and I can meet with professors, like speak with them. They can they're helping me like achieve um the best of myself. So. At this point, I think I need to like um, draw the cuts. So I won't shoot over the time. So thank you so much, guys, for having me. Um, thank you very much, Scholar David. It was nice having you and even listening to uh, your experience so far at the school. Um, honestly, honestly, uh, personally, when people talk to me and start saying um, I'm applying for so so and um, I'm not um, sure if I will get this or get that, I used to be like, well. Uh, you need to ask people who are in this field. Scholarship application is even more difficult than job. Like, it's a full-time job on its own. Like, you have to dedicate everything and anything, your time, your money, and everything. So, believe me, the years will come, just like Scholar David has said. So, moving forward, uh, I, I want to believe that um, Scholar Reu will not be mad at me because I'll, I'll be moving on to him last. Um, I'll have um, Scholar Kudus next to give us what are the stages, like the application process as regards the School of Collective Intelligence. How do you make this happen? And um, I think he has one extra, a plus for us, which is an initiative by him uh, with the school of, uh, with the Mohammed Six Polytechnic University as a whole. Uh, he's bringing this initiative and his welcome idea, a very nice one from his own end as a Nigerian 
waving the flag of Nigeria very high. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. I don't know if uh, all the adjectives you used to qualify me uh, actually. <laughs> well, I will take it. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Kudu Soladiji. I'm popularly known as Sacrosant. So today I'm going to walk you through the um, application procedures. So the first thing you need to have at the back of your mind is the letter, the motivation letter. Okay. So um, Olumide, I think you are the one talking about a motivation letter, right? So I don't mix things. Yes, up. I, I okay. will be going in depth in that, so you can just. Oh, okay, so I will, I will allow you to do the justice when it's right. So I'll be focusing on the test and the interview. So on the test, let me start on the test. It's actually divided into three phases, if you allow me to say that. So the school in particular will be testing your logical reasoning. So do you have the mathematical inclination to withstand some logical pressure? So how do I mean? So when you are testing your logical reasoning, because I, I could uh, recall vividly, we were being tested on the aspect of um, numerical reasoning, uh, mathematics and statistics, and a bit of probability. Of course, people who are not familiar with that area of semantics will be thinking that uh, how will I survive if I don't have strong mathematics? No, they don't want you to reach GRE wide, but they just want you to, do you have the, the, the sense to comprehend simple mass, arithmetic and numerical reasoning? So that is basically what they are testing. And then I would not like to bombard you with a lot of materials, read this, read that. You know what to do. Get a tons of material out there that will actually fascinate your knowledge on basic logical reasoning. And where do you get materials like that? You can get materials on GMAT. So that aspect that will be tested will be sharpened. So I, I, re I remember they asked me questions on the, a graph, okay? They asked me a question on the probability, okay? They asked me a question on, on, you know, all this average thing. But the beautiful thing about School of Collective Intelligence, they'll give you ample time to think through the, the, the exercise and then for you to do justice to it. So on logical reasoning part, that is one set. I expect, I think I've been able to do justice to it in my own um, capacity. The next thing you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to focus on the comprehension. School of Collective Intelligence will be testing your ability to comprehend things. Now, this is, you know, one side is the mathematical thinking part. The next uh, angle is, do you, can you comprehend things? Can you comprehend the worded sentence or sentences? Do you have ability to digest information and then quickly process and give out reasonable response? So, so I've been in the system. I know what, uh, I've been lucky to be in the system. That should be the right word, with the grace of God. And then I've been, I've been, uh, I'm closer to them to really know what they want, and then for to fit in what they want with your ability. So you need to sharpen your comprehension. How do you do that? Of course, if you're an average reader, you will do justice to that. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, writing. Collective intelligence is also centered on writing ability. Okay, so there's an aspect of collective intelligence which is research, you should be able to conduct meaningful research. So those are the components they are, you know, take a look at it. Data science is closer to mathematical thinking, isn't it? Second, organization transformation, ability to comprehend problems, solve, and third, uh, okay, I think they're messaging you for time. Also, that's that about that. And um, the next thing you need to focus on, on the interview. See, I... For interview, I will not say there is a one-way traffic, a uh, one-way method you have to uh, equip yourself with. Why do you want to study collective intelligence? You need to have a tone of questions and then answer them yourself and then have a mirror in your room. And that was the way I did my own. I have a tone of questions, like 40-something questions. And now let me give you an example. A friend of mine is currently traveling to Bengari. There's a powerful activity going on on campus. So... So he shared his experience with me. They said, 
one of our professors on the faculty asked him, why do you pick collective intelligence? And then he has his background in uh, uh, computer science. Let me tell you what he said. He said, I want to study collective intelligence because the world is having a crisis with data center. And you know the data center, they, 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 they accommodate it. So it's coming to collective intelligence to combine brains of like-minded like people you meet on campus and then they will solve the problem together. You, you open your mouth, right? I did too. And trust me, it was one of uh, major people on the list. So that's that about that. So finally, to wrap it up. So, so, so for your interview, I have a series of questions that align with the, the department and answer them amazingly, interestingly, you get your way. And uh, as my brother earlier alluded that I'm having a project uh, with a school, it is called an essay competition, a video essay competition for potential applicants in the, in the university. So I just got the authenticity of um, the, the Dean of Student Affairs to go ahead with the project. So I'll be, it's about an essay competition. So you will be shooting a video uh, of yourself explaining, uh, answering this essay topic, which goes thus. How does UMCSP vision aligns with your dream? So thank you very much for your time. I think I have to pass the baton to the next person. Um, thank you very much. It was sacrosanct. Um, uh, without wasting time, I'll, I'll call on my next uh, scholar, Scholar Ulumide Areo. Uh, you can have the floor and please demystify everything that has to do with motivation letter. Thank you very much. I'm trying to share my screen right now. And uh, let me know when you see my screen, please. Can you see a PDF file? No. Hello? Can you see Not my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. How about now? Yeah. Okay. Um, still. It has I gone up. It's gone again. Yeah, it's gone up. Yeah. Okay, I think I know what is going on. Let me stop sharing. Share screen. How about now? Can you see my screen now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wonderful. So um, I'm happy to be here and I want to thank um, my previous scholars for having me here as well. I am with the uh, MSc International Management Program. And I want to say that uh, the collective intelligence is very, very interesting. I didn't have any background in uh, coding or what have you, but I also got into the program where I had to select the management because it aligns more with uh, a particular uh, career path that I wanted. So it's a very interesting program, collective intelligence. And, and those that think they don't have uh, the qualification should please apply. So I'm saying do apply. Now I'm going straight to talk about writing a standout motivation letter. I'm going to skip the aspect of um, my name and my bio. I'm going to go straight to why do you write a motivation letter? For usually, if you want to write a motivation, if you want to apply for a university program, exchange program, or a fellowship, or even a job or an internship, you need to write a motivation letter. You need to convince the uh, admission team or the employer that I need this job. The same applies to the application for all programs at UM60. Now, what are the structure? What are the structures of the motivation letter? Number one, it is a one-pager writing uh, essay. I call it an essay because you need to talk about a story, and it is a narrative one, to be precise. Um, I want to say that Writing is very important, like my previous uh, uh, scholar, Sacrosanct, mentioned. If you cannot write to express, if you cannot write to convince, my dear, then there is a problem. And then there are a few uh, structures we're going to go through here that I want you all to please focus on. You cannot write a motivation letter without an address. You have to address it to someone. And when addressing a letter, you have to have the usual system we've been taught in school. You have the, uh, the sender's address on the right, and on the left-hand side, you have the admissions or the recipient's letter. And for this particular aspect of the motivation letter, specifically for the program here at UM6B, this is the format that I advise. Number one, 
specifically first the admission committee Mohammed six uh polytechnic university for example and we are with the africa business school africa business school then you go ahead and find the address the specific address of this school and then attach it salutation uh, i think gone are the days when we do dear sir dear ma because we don't know whether the person is a female or a male so hence this is how i advise dear admission team it is a team who, who, who does the review dear administrator dear graduate team this way it allows you to not be specific but be smart about the salutation um can you see my screen to show yeah. you everyone is following good now this is a tip that has worked for me in everything i do in respect of, in respect of writing sops essays fellowship whatever it is most programs in the u.s may not even give you access to writing motivation letter but they give you questions that suit into an expression of the why framework please note that this is a one pager document you don't want to write too much what is the why framework the why framework consists of the introduction one to two paragraph if you choose if you can express yourself in one paragraph that is fine the body three paragraph and conclusion one paragraph asking yourself the why framework is easy sit yourself down pick a pen up and say who am i for the introduction and when you are writing when you're answering this question rather ask yourself why does the school need me why do i need to be in the school the school is the one having the precious aspect of a tool they want to give you. And you are going to use that tool, which is a program. So why do they need you? Put yourself in a situation where they are sending you an errand. Why do they need you to deliver? Why do they need you to be on this program? And make the introduction tell them, or the reader, I want to hear more. Put them in a, sus in a, in a suspense situation. What are the days when we start um, our motivation letters in a generic way? Uh, when I was still small, when my when I can remember when my mother, those are generic ways that should be broken. I wish I had time to, to give you some examples on how you should introduce yourself, but please make it stand out. Now, I'll give you a demonstration. Imagine this introduction. I am working on the path to my future, and I cannot do without looking behind me this is a captivating introduction i've just made this up it keeps the reader in a suspense what is this guy trying to say what is this lady trying to say i have just been in a situation what situation if you can put all of these things to talk about yourself in introduction then you should go into the body we should have three paragraphs paragraph one should talk about facts what are the facts it could be a professional fact it could be a leadership fact. It could be an academic fact. And these facts could be precise to, if you have experience that are more than two years, talk about that profession. If you have a leadership uh, uh, a leadership uh, experience, talk about it. Have you led people? Have you done things that shows that you are a leader? Talk about it in the body. Have you had academic progress? Do you, are you a first class student? Are you a second class student? But while in school, you, do, you did amazing stuff. You had a you had an a, an achievement in your research talk about it why the program why the university and most importantly why now the why now is pinpointing your career path linking it to the program because the thing is if you cannot tell me who you are and where you see yourself in five six seven years that is not convincing enough because i'm investing money i'm investing value into you how does that value come back in the long run? This is the essence of the body. And then the conclusion states the facts again. The, the thing is, in the conclusion, we, we used to, we, when we write essays in, in our secondary school, this is the same thing that still applies now. So for your conclusion, you need to reinstate who you are, put a little bit of the body, and remind the reminder, let them remind them that this is why you still need me. In case if, the flow of your story does not align. The conclusion reminds whoever that is reading that please, you should pick me for so, 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 and so, re so reasons. And then at the end of the day, this is important. You should thank the reader. Appreciate that the reader has taken time to read your work. There are no more generic ways to, to do a salutation, a conclusion, concluding salutation. 
uh, these days you could hear your sincerely yours faithfully but these days also you hear best regards um you, you hear um best regards yes kind regards as conclusions you write your name and then you sign on it moving on if you want your motivation to stand out then you should tell a story do not tell your life achievement in a single letter of motivation I've, I've read motivation letters from different applicants from the group which which maybe most of you belong to and you see somebody talking about their life from nyc down to when they finished nyc down to how they got a job in fact they even start from secondary school how they have a diploma how they move to the university you bore the reader i have a i, I wrote a 1000 letter motivation letter in one day i told the story in one day in fact, the motivation letter was between 8 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And that is the end of the motivation letter in 1,000 words. And that is the uh, or that is the essay that won the Peter Duca for me in 2020. So what am I trying to say? You don't need to write all your life achievements. Write a single flow. If it's about that particular experience you did in school that talks about your, your one single achievement you are proud of, Ask yourself one question. What is my proudest achievement? Focus on that proudest achievement, and I, I trust, trust me, you're going to do well. Now, ask somebody to read your motivation letter. You are going to make mistakes. Have you ever written something before you think is amazing? And after three days, four days, you come back to it, it is rubbish. I'm a writer, and this is the things I experience. I write something amazing today, and in between five days, I come back to it. I'm, like, I'm asking myself, am I, am I the person that wrote this thing? What was I thinking when I wrote this? So you need to write and write again. Ask somebody to look at it. Look for a second eye. And there is a, there is a rule to everything. Make sure your sentences are not more than 25 words. This is because it will help your punctuation and it will not make your sentence structure to be erroneous. Because it is English and English has a structure. For those who have written the IELTS exams or written the TOEFL, they can tell you better make your structure of your sentence less or not more than 25 words properly punctuated common mistakes you should avoid please you do not need to answer everything yes but answer the right questions using the y framework answer the right questions secondly you want to write a lot of things like i said do not write too much when you write too much you get lost and you may not focus on the facts and then at the end of the day, you don't have a connecting aspiration towards the program. How will this program change you? How is it meant for you? In fact, why are you coming to Morocco? Is it because you want to jack up on your country? Convince the reader, I am coming to Morocco because I am just I simply want to learn in a multicultural environment. What did I write in my own motivation letter? I told the uh, com admission committee that I love Africa and I just simply want to explore africa and i want to start with morocco it's as simple as that and like like i said earlier don't sound local since i was young my mommy used to tell me that i'll be an accountant i ended up being an accountant during my tender age i did not i i, I wanted to be a scientist i used to do scientific things i ended that's why i'm not an engineer when i was young i used to build engineering no please start with something that stands you out do not sound local then your letter doesn't have a structure this will this you are looking you are, you are sending a letter to people who are in the academic line speak academic if you're going to write anything academic you should have a background there should be an introduction there should be a body and there should be a conclusion therefore tell them that you are already in the system you already know how it works this gives them confidence that you are the right talent for that program and uh, conclusively, uh, due to time, if there are any questions, you can put it in the comment section. And if there's time to have, ask questions and uh, answer questions, I'm sure uh, we will do, do uh, with the questions from other scholars as well. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> that was very short, precise, and uh, well detailed. Um, I could remember my boss is right here, uh, Scholar Kudus was my mentor during my writing time. And even up to date, anytime I write anything, I always send it to him to review. So 
I think as an individual, the facts remain that when you write something and you give it to someone to check, you are telling them to check for an error. And the facts remain that when you're looking for something, you find it. So that is just what it has to do with giving your essays for someone to review. So thank you very much on that, Mark. Uh, we really appreciate that. And right now, it's time for us to take uh, questions from uh, uh, viewers from everywhere around the world. Uh, we know you have been listening and you have a lot of questions. So kindly type in your question. We'll take them and um, our scholars are here to uh, give you response to it. Okay, if, I think we we already okay. Yeah, okay. actually, this is not a question. This is not a question. Did you listen to this? Yeah, there's uh, there's someone that asked uh, okay. if the admission yeah. is for Muslim alone. Exactly, exactly. There was someone that asked, and I will ask. Um, probably David or Ulumide can give response to that um, question, saying the uh, admission at tm 6 p is probably for Muslim alone, being uh, a Muslim country? Um, I, I want to just contribute to the fact that I had this question myself before I applied last year. Mm -hmm. It was when I went online to do my research, I saw that there are 99.9% .9 of uh, Moroccans are Muslim. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and don't get me wrong, I stayed in the Muslim part of Nigeria almost for the entire part of my life. I speak Hausa. So I understand the lifestyle of Muslims to some extent, if you ask me. So I was fine with it. But then that question, that, that question was still there. But I want to inform you that, please, this is the least of what you should think about. It is a country that is um, secular or going in towards the secular part of the world. And that means that it is not religious in that sense. That, OK, fine, it is meant for Muslims alone. Therefore, if I come there, I'm not going to survive. No. And when I say religious, I don't mean that when you come here, you're not going to practice your own uh, uh, your own religion. That's what I mean. I'm a Christian. I'm here and I go to church. There's a church in Morocco. So I encourage you people to please apply. And uh, we hope to have you here. David, if you have something to add, please. Yes, yes. I want to add to that. Okay. So, of course, it's the normal thing to have the fear of. Okay. When I come to Morocco, like, um, and things like that. So, I'm a Christian. So, I'm in Morocco and I've been fine. So far, so good. And I'll still be fine if I leave this place. And even on campus, there's even a place whereby, I mean, the Muslims worship, the Christians worship, and I think the Jews worship. I mean, side by side. So, that shows you that, um, it's a place where yeah, everybody's welcome. In as much as when you come here, you obey the rules and you obey the laws and regulations, you'll be fine. So that's just what I want to add to that. When, when just you come here, obey the rules and regulation and practice your faith in peace and you'll be fine. So that's just it. Your mic is muted. Sorry about that. Uh, actually, I think there's another question asking about uh, if someone with a background in petroleum engineering can, can apply. So I think um, Sulema had, oh, no, no, no. I think David had a background in engineering. So I, I will ask, I will allow you to answer that question as well. Yes, yes. I mean, I have a background in electrical engineering and a lot of people in my class, I think, have background in physics and things like that. It's, I mean, it's even like it's any background you are from, you can apply for this particular course. I and mean, because uh, it's a mixture of like pure science and humanities, for example, like um, just we, we do it like some programming in this particular course. So, I mean, if you're coming from engineering background, you have like some experience with programming. And even though you don't have programming experience, I mean, you'll be taught at least the basis of how to program that you will need, you know, in your course. So you have no fear. Any background, engineering, humanities, um, pure sciences, anyone you're coming from, because the idea of this course is that we want to like be able to harness the strengths of different, you know, um, field and bring them together to like form a whole. So you're fine with any background you have. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, I will let Aziz go with this. Is someone is asking the question we have on the screen right now? 
asking about the scholarship application and um, how to give out the application as well. Uh, the links, okay. Uh, so uh, the link to start your application is my.umcsp.mh. So uh, the and, and we made a demo uh, video for that uh, for you to apply to guide you. And the link has already been dropped in the uh, comment section. You can find that. Uh, and we also uh, have a group uh, WhatsApp group where I think uh, we will share that later. When, when you when you check the demo link, you also find the uh, link to join the WhatsApp uh, group as well. <laughs> and you and. And you ask if you, uh, if I get it, you ask if you need to apply for scholarship uh, before admission. So uh, the way it works is that you need to first submit your application. Just focus on that as well. Write, like, like the scholars have said, make sure you write your motivation letter very well, document your achievement, and submit your application. So when uh, after you gain, you know, when you pass the first uh, review stage, when you get admitted, the, the school will ask you to submit do, some documents. And this is the essence of we having the WhatsApp group in order to guide you, because there are some documents that will be required that is not the same with uh, what they use in Morocco. But as Nigerians, you know, we've had experience here. We know uh, how to do that. So you will just submit documents after, you know, later when you get admitted. So that is it uh, about that. Okay. Um, thank you very much for that. I I think um, I will allow uh, Suleiman to take this very question we have on the screen, uh, talking about the visa application and sorts. Okay, um, for the visa application, after getting maybe the admission and your scholarship, you'll be the one to apply at the embassy there in Abuja. And I think it's not that expensive. Is it not 10,000 or 15,000, if I'm not mistaken? So what the school will do is just like to send like a message to the embassy there in Nigeria, telling them that you are a student and you have been like offered admission and scholarship. So by day so uh, by by so doing, sending a message to the embassy, they will fast track um, the visa processes for you. So for the for the visa, you'll be the one to process that yourself. You get so I think it's within the range of um, ten thousand. To fifteen thousand, I think the, the price has been brought down because when we did our own back in twenty twenty one, we paid the sum of twenty thousand naira after it has been approved. But um, for those that came last year, which is twenty twenty two, they paid the sum of ten thousand naira, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yeah, so that's that um, for the visa um, part. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Skola Kudus. I have two questions for you. Uh, so the first one is asking about um, if financial constraint can be a stumbling block for the scholarship application. And the second one is about the um, essay competition you talked about. So someone is asking how they can like make a great video quality, probably with their phones or something. So um, to start with the financial constraints, take it this way. Um, the money I used to get into Morocco, someone gave it to me. And it was roughly 300000 So that's the highest I paid. That's the highest form of money. The rest is uh, some documents they need uh, from you to actually validate that uh, truly you need the financial... Uh, uh, you meet the financial need to get the scholarship. So what other things... All the rest, you can joke them yourself. You you want to submit application. I think there, there, there was, at some point, there was uh, the need for us to go to the court to validate some documents. But trust me, once it is your turn, we know that we know how you are easily because we faced the fire and then we later got the, uh, the easy way out. So for the financial constraint, you have no worry about. The, needs, the, need, uh, the, the, the highest you need to be worrying about is your flight to Morocco. The, the one you pay at the embassy is a chicken change. So don't, don't, it's not a big deal. Now for the essay competition, well, um, the video quality is one of the criteria that will be used to sieve out uh, the beans from the pod. So it's important you ensure that you give it your A, but it's not, this is 
a disclaimer. It is not a criteria for you to be selected. This is just like an incentive for you to know more about the school and then f sit down and uh, think on how the school vision aligns with your dream. That's all. It doesn't have anything to do with um, uh, mm -hmm. you being uh, selected at the, at the end of the day. But trust me, if you take time to search more about the school and then you align that with your dream, it's going to assist your motivation later. That's what we intend to do. However, there are uh, prices like the university customized items and uh, some powerful goodies. Uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, I think, uh, Abdullah? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, I, th I think, I think um, because we needed to mention about what this, uh, the scholarship covers as the yes, question okay. mentioned, you know? Okay. So uh, yes. one of the things that you don't have to bother yourself about is that when uh, Scholar Suleiman was presenting about the application fee, 5,000 dirham and all sorts, so uh, we know, you know, for some of us that you don't have, uh, like, I don't. I, I didn't pay the money, I, I, and I don't think um, maybe if there's anyone that paid it, yeah. Because if you happen to be someone that come from, you know, you need financial aid. If you can really demonstrate that, so the scholarship will really cover that. That's one one of the things. Second is that your tuition, your accommodation, uh, you you get that paid for under your scholarship. Hopefully, if you get a uh, hundred percent scholarship. And also, also you will be getting stipend every two two weeks. It's, it's it's monthly, but they break it into two so that you can get it every two two weeks. And you can this is more than enough for you to feed and also to send some money to your family at home. So, that's it. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, we'll just try and take uh, some other questions in the next seven minutes. So we stop at five thirty on the dot. So this question I will be asking Scholar David because I know he's a businessman. Uh, someone from the um, chat was asking if this program is a full-time or a part-time because he works and he doesn't know if he's going to quit his work or something, something like that. So I would like you to respond to that. Well, that's that's a very big question. Like it's set up for me because it depends really on, on the kind of work that you are doing. I mean, if your work is a full time, first and foremost, a full time, and it's quite um very, very um time consuming. Sometimes you have classes from morning like um nine to around like six sometimes. Of course, you're free, you are free from that six, like after what means the your assignment and things like that. But when it comes to like um towards the end of the semester when you have to do project, trust me, you have no time for your life. Like once you are doing your project work and I think Everybody can can agree with me to that. Like most of the time for your project work, like around um, around um, when the the semester is about to end, you'll be very occupied with a lot of things to do. So if your work, it depends on what you do. If you do do a remote job, I mean, I have guys here who are actually working and also still studying. You get so if you do a remote job, that means that you know that you have no uh, business with all kinds of play here, just like your schooling and your work. So you can still like manage them if you have do a remote job. And also if you have your own business, like an online business like, like myself, you can still like manage them together. But then it will be very, very strenuous and very, very tedious for you. But then, I mean, life's about taking risk. So if you can take the risk, why not try it? But then if you have like a full-time job like that, you have to like be there in person, you cannot combine both of them together. So it, I think it's all about the type of the job that you do in Nigeria or wherever you are. Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to turn to Scholar Ariel. So this person is asking, like, at what interval does the university um, advertise the programs that the school offers? Okay, uh, I want to assume that you mean how often within the year? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, it is usually at the, usually it is from January to March, but this year, we are even surprised that for the quarter of 2023 and 2024, they started in November, December. Like for my own school, for management and uh, for international management, it started in December and it's ending by March. Uh, I'm not sure of that of SCI, but usually the entry time is October. October, you should be here. Most of the arrangement will also happen between September and October. So between September and October, the first semester begins. 
and then um, his semester ends in January, February, and then you start another one again. And before you know it, in two years, you are done with your internship and what have you. And it is an amazing program. The uh, the uh, uh, collective intelligence program and the ones at, uh, at international management, this is an amazing program that will change your life because I must tell you that this is what I've been able to experience here. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for that. So, um, Scholar Aziz, I love this question very well. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm directing this personally to you because uh, you have the experience in this field. So this question is asking um, if it is possible for someone to bring along a spouse, and if not, if you cannot be, uh, if the stipend being given is enough to sponsor uh, your spouse, I don't know, probably being a master student or being a PhD student, maybe you can answer in that regard. All right, that's why I was laughing because I knew you were talking about. So uh, as a master student, um, you know, I'm married uh, with kids, uh, but to tell you the fact, the, the stipend is enough for you to survive and to send money home, but uh, as a master student, but it is not enough for you to sponsor your family, to bring them to Morocco. This is the reason, because when they come, they cannot stay with you on campus, the accommodation that you'll be staying. So you have to rent an apartment outside. And to rent that, I think uh, here they pay uh, every month. So at least even if you get the minimum of 1,000 dirham, I, I mean, uh, for, for the apartment, you cannot uh, do that unless you have a kind of uh, some kind of personal job that you're able to do to support yourself. That's one thing. But Morocco will not say that you cannot bring your family. You are welcome to bring your family. And also you will get a residence card that, uh, you know, you will live as if you are also a citizen here. So, uh, but you, if you happen to be a PhD student, uh, for I, I don't want to mention the amount they are collecting, but it's a lot. You can bring your family here <laughs> if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, thank you very much for that. I think this is as much as we can go, or can we quickly take one more? Okay, let's take this question we have on the screen. Um, what is the possibility of getting a good job upon graduation? Do you have to return home? Okay, as least you can go ahead and give us a response to that as well. All right, thank you. Uh, so I actually, upon after graduating, I went back to Nigeria for my internship, and I decided to come back to Morocco. As I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm, I'm in Morocco. So you are always uh, welcome to stay in Morocco if you want. And also what the, uh, about the job, uh, uh, I, I think I have to say it now because you're asking. I'm currently going through, uh, you know, job application process. I, I'm getting employed by, by the university itself. Uh, for you to know uh, the kind of opportunity that you can have here. So maybe the next time that we'll be having this webinar, I'll be talking to you as the, you know, the staff of the uh, uh, university. And also there are a lot of opportunity outside, I mean, in Morocco. There are many companies, many, you know. But one thing I would like to advise you that is that if you plan to work in Morocco after your graduation, make sure you learn French because you'll be working with people that doesn't speak uh, English and that can be very hard. So that's one thing. Just just know that. Okay. Um, thank you very much for that. I think this is as, as most, much as we can go. Sorry for my intonation. I'm a Yoruba boy. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, this is as much as we can go. And um, I think we have dropped the um, WhatsApp group link to the uh, comment section. So if there's anyone with any other question, I think someone was asking if we still have some other webinars as regards motivation letter and something like that. It's something possible in the future, so we will look uh, to that as well. And I want to believe um, HISF has done series of webinars as regards writing motivation letter. You can check this down on HISF at, uh, on uh, YouTube. You can find series of helping videos that will assist your application Different uh, countries around the world has been uh, demystified already. So, and um, yes to us saying thank you to all our scholars present here today. We really appreciate your time. Uh, we know you guys are like seriously working on great things and you left what you have been doing so far uh, to answer to the call of um, support for 
uh, people who are willing to apply as well. We pray that Almighty God will assist every one of you in uh, your ways. Um, this is all saying thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. See ya. Catch ya later.